Good morning. morning. This is the day that the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. It is beautiful outside and uh, nice to see the snow falling. A little bit surprised, but hey, we'll take it as it comes. Uh, Today is obviously Super Bowl Sunday, and so many of you have already brought in your canned goods and placed them in the bin. Uh, Gary Warren told me he's going to wait a couple days. So if those watching online haven't had a chance to bring those up, uh, you can bring them Uh, Monday or Tuesday, and he'll take those over to Chasm on Wednesday. So uh, thank you for participating in that. Uh, Our next men's breakfast is coming up next Saturday here at the church, February 13th at 8 a.m. I come up here for food and fellowship with the guys, and uh, it really has been great for us to be back together and enjoying that time together. So hope you'll make that a priority. You can sign up for that on the website under the events page or just call the church office and Meredith can get you plugged in uh, for that. Coming up on February 20th, we have our leadership retreat. So the staff, the elders, the trustees, and the deacons will meet up here at the church for a good portion of the day uh, and take that time to Uh, reflect on the last year and look at what we've got coming up in 2021 and um, it's really a time for us to be filled up and so I hope that all of you will be praying uh, for your leadership that day uh, that that is a time of of rest and renewal and encouragement for the work that they have ahead of them. Uh, Wanted to point out that um, or let you know that Marina had an unexpected death in the family so she had to leave town last night Um, So there is no youth group tonight, but she is going to send out an email with some games. And uh, my understanding is that the prize is a Chick-fil-A gift card, which is like manna from heaven. So um, if you uh, would like to participate in that, she'll be sending out instructions via email. And then I had one more thing I wanted to mention. Oh, next sermon series Uh, is going to start next week. We're wrapping up gratitude today. And uh, well, we're going to continue with gratitude, but the sermon series... (laughs) We'll wrap up today, and then um, we'll pivot to looking at small groups in the Bible. So the title is Small Group, Big Impact, and we'll look at various places in Scripture where small groups occur and uh, what the Bible teaches us about them and why it is so important to be in one. And um, so we're going to study that during the month of February with the idea of kicking off a church-wide small group study in the month of March. And that is called Reopening Christianity. Um, And sounds pretty provocative uh, or controversial given this past year. But really what it's looking at is, you know, after this season where uh, church has been different, um, what things should uh, change as we kind of gear back up? And uh, so I'm excited for that study to do it as a church. And uh, again, that'll be in March. And so our, our small group series is leading up to that. We'll have some news for you in the coming weeks about some new small groups that are beginning. So if you're not plugged in one, you'll have the opportunity to do so. And with that, let us stand and greet one another in the name of Jesus. Well, welcome to the house of God. Uh, Let's worship together. You know, worship is the act of paying divine honors to the supreme being or the uh, reverence and homage paid to him in religious exercises consisting in adoration, confession, prayer, thanksgiving, and the like. As when Ezra blessed the Lord, the great God, and all the people answered, amen, amen, with lifting up of their hands, and they bowed their heads and worshiped the Lord with their faces to the ground. Today, and always, let us exalt the Lord our God and worship at his footstool, for he is holy. Join with me in our opening words. Give thanks to the Lord with your whole heart. In the company of the congregation. The Lord is gracious and merciful, ever mindful of the covenant, the words of God's hands are faithful and just, established forever and ever. Holy and awesome is God's name. God's praise endures forever. Let's remain standing as we sing our hymns of praise.
please be seated. And join with me in a prayer. Lord, we bless your holy name. We acknowledge that you are Lord of Lords and King of Kings. You are our creator and savior, the Lord and master of everything that exists is infinite and merciful love. Your faithfulness to us reaches to the heavens. We adore thee, Lord Jesus, and we praise thee. Amen. Join with me in our prayer of confession. Merciful God, you show us what it means to follow you. Forgive us when we fail. Open our hearts and minds to your teachings. We model compassion to Jesus Christ, but we do not extend kindness to strangers or friends. You challenge injustice to the mode of your spirit, having created all good things. Your creation sings your praise thanks you for the forgiveness of sin, for your compassion on us this day, to show us how to share it with one another. Amen. If anyone does sin, we have an advocate with the Father, Jesus Christ the righteous. He is the propitiation for our sins, because God commanded his love towards us in that while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. Hallelujah. God pardons those who humbly repent and truly believe the gospel. Be assured then, since Jesus Christ died for us, we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Please be seated. Actually, stay standing. <laughs> Sorry about that. I didn't see the little asterisk there. Uh, Moses said to all the congregation of the people of Israel, this is the thing that the Lord has commanded. Take from among you a contribution to the Lord. Whoever is of a generous heart, let him bring the Lord's contribution. As we place our contributions in the plates at the entrance and exit doors or online, let us be grateful to a generous and loving God for every blessing we count.
pray. Lord, we give thanks for all we have received, gifts of love and time, money and abilities. Into this church, we return a portion of these gifts. Bless those who receive them, just as we are blessed in the act of sharing them. Amen. Please be seated. See, that's what I love about this church. We care about you, mind, body, and spirit. Stand up, sit down, stand up, <laughs> sit down. Everybody stretch. Um, before we go to God in prayer, I uh, just wanted to also remind you that we do have a congregational meeting after the 11 o'clock service. So if you could stay, that would be great. We would appreciate it. Um, we're going to be a little close on the quorum. So uh, we will see one way or the other. But we'll have some things to share with you, even if we can't have the official meeting. So uh, please do stick around for that. Uh, let's go to God in prayer. Uh, Father God, we come to you uh, this morning just keenly aware of your blessings as uh, we've spent this last uh, month or so studying gratitude. Uh, we just come to you with hearts that are grateful this morning, uh, grateful that uh, you cared for us so much that you sent your son Jesus to be with us, to teach us, to reveal yourself most fully to us. Uh, we are grateful for the authors of the Bible, uh, that uh, they were led by your spirit in recording your acts upon uh, across rather the long arc of of history and so this morning we are thankful for the prophets for uh for jesus and um all those who testify uh, to him and uh, we lift this all up to you in jesus name amen we have uh, two scripture readings this morning i'll be reading from numbers chapter 6 verses 20 through through 26 and then we'll flip to the book of 2 Corinthians and study chapter 9, verses 6 through 11. Uh, this morning, our focus is on gratitude for blessings, uh, but we're also looking at being postured for generosity as a response. And so uh, be listening for that as we hear God's word to us today, starting with Numbers chapter 6. The Lord said to Moses, tell Aaron and his sons... This is how you are to bless the Israelites. Say to them, the Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord turn his face towards you and give you peace. And then Paul says in the book of 2 Corinthians, remember this. Whoever sows sparingly will also reap sparingly. And whoever sows generously will also reap generously. Each of you should give what you have decided in the heart to give, not reluctantly or under compulsion, for God loves a cheerful giver. And God is able to bless you abundantly, so that in all things, at all times, be having all that you need, you will abound in every good work. As it is written, they have freely scattered their gifts to the poor, their righteousness endures forever. Now he who supplies seed to the sower and bread for food will also supply, will also supply and increase your store of seed and will enlarge the harvest of your righteousness. You will be enriched in every way so that you can be generous on every occasion. And through us, your generosity will result in thanksgiving to God. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Amen. So as I was thinking about the face of God, and, and especially looking at Numbers chapter 6, where we hear uh, the call um, uh, that Moses gives us, the priestly blessing, about the face of God turning towards us, shining upon us, uh, I was also kind of holding that intention with another verse, another passage of Scripture, uh, holding these things in tension this week, and it's where Moses uh, asked to see God's glory, and God tells him, you can't see my face. No man can see my face and actually live. Um, so we're kind of holding those things in tension as I'm thinking about the face of God this week. Um, when we talk about the face of God, oftentimes in the Bible, what is being discussed is whether God is accepting a group of people or an individual or their behavior, or whether he's in fact rejecting it. Um, that's what scripture is saying. Uh, when God hides his face from someone, 
Um, and so there are instances in, uh, such as Psalm 51 where God's people go to God and ask him to hide his face from their sins, um, to uh, extend mercy and grace. And so that's one instance of God hiding his face. Um, as I said, there are times when God will set his face against someone or, or a certain behavior. Uh, but then the alternative to that is for uh, God's people to ask God to shine his light on them. Psalm uh, uh, 4, verse 6 says, Let the light of your face shine upon us. Um, we are told, seek uh, the Lord's face. And so how do we hold all these things to tension was a little bit of a, a question for me. And so I was looking to Scripture for some examples of where people uh, encounter God and, and, and what happens to them. Genesis chapter 32, uh, we see Jacob actually wrestling with God. Can you imagine that, getting into a wrestling match with God? He's, he's wrestling with a man, and no one seems to be prevailing uh, until finally this emissary or, of God strikes Jacob on the hip. Uh, but, but Jacob gets up from this encounter, this wrestling match, and he names this place Peniel because it is there that he had seen God and lived. Well, the question is, did he really see God? Scripture says that he was wrestling with a man. So there are questions. Maybe he was wrestling with an angel of the Lord, not the Lord himself. Uh, some have wondered if this person wrestling with Jacob wasn't a Christophany, which is a pre-incarnation appearance of Jesus. And so these are some of the uh, alternatives to maybe Jacob didn't actually wrestle with God, the Lord himself. Uh, Judges chapter 6, we see Gideon who sees an angel of the Lord. Uh, Samson, his parents, see an angel of the Lord as well. And, and in response, they offer up a sacrificial offering, a burnt offering. And as the fire is raging in front of them, the angel of the Lord ascends in the fire. And all of a sudden, Samson's dad starts to freak out. He says, we are all doomed because we've seen God. We're going to die. And yet he didn't. He saw an angel of the Lord, not God himself. In Exodus chapter 33, as I mentioned earlier, Moses asks to see God's glory. And yet God says back, you cannot see my face. No man can see my face and live. So what does God do? He puts Moses in a cleft in the rock. He puts, God puts his hand over so Moses can't see what's going on. God passes by and then takes his hand away. And now Moses can see God's back, but he hasn't seen God's face. So it's interesting that a few verses earlier, uh, in, again in Exodus 33, it says that God or, and, and Moses spoke face to face, but scripture ad, adds as one speaks to a friend. So probably an analogy rather than, uh, you know, describing the, this relationship that God has established with Moses. In 2008, I believe it was, there was an experiment conducted at Yale University up in New Haven, Connecticut, very close to where Nicole grew up. And uh, this researcher would go into the, an elevator with, a, uh, with an individual, and as they're riding their way up, the, the researcher had a whole bunch of papers and binders in one hand, and in her other hand was a cup of coffee. And as the elevator is ascending up in the building, she would hand the cup of coffee to the person in the elevator with her, have them hold it while she could jot down some notes, and then once they reached the floor of their destination, uh, she would take the cup of coffee back. They would go out into the room. And at that point, the person riding in the elevator who had held the cup of coffee would read up on, read a, a story about a, a person and then would have to answer a survey about how they viewed that person. Did they view them favorably? Um, was it with uh, kind of a, a heartwarming experience or not? And what they found out was that the variable in the experiment was what kind of coffee it was. Not flavor, 
not black or with cream, but hot or cold. When the person was handed a hot cup of coffee, they walked away from the encounter with a more favorable impression of this individual that they read about than they did otherwise. And so the temperature of the coffee made all the difference in the world. So in Exodus 34, we hear some additional words about Moses. When Moses came down from Mount Sinai with the two tablets of the covenant law in his hands, he was not aware that his face was radiant. His face was radiant because he had spoken with the Lord. When Aaron and all the Israelites saw Moses, his face was radiant, and they were afraid to come near him. But Moses called to them, so Aaron and all the leaders of the community came back to him, and he spoke to them. Afterward, all the Israelites came near him, and he gave them all the commandments the Lord had given him on Mount Sinai. When Moses, Moses finished speaking to them, he put a veil over his face. But whenever he entered the Lord's presence to speak with him, he removed the veil until he came out. And when he came out and told the Israelites what he had been commanded, they saw that his face was radiant. Then Moses would put back the veil over his face until he went in to speak to the Lord. People can tell when we've been in God's presence. They can see there's something different about our own countenance, how we look. Each one of us, all who belong to Christ Jesus, have seen the face of God. And then we respond to his grace. So when we think about blessings, and, and by that I mean what we have individually as families, but also what we have as the broader family, the church, the body of Christ, uh, I think there's two ways that we can kind of assess what we have, our resources. Uh, we can look out and see what we've earned, what we've achieved, and say, you know what? I've worked pretty darn hard. I've worked hard, I've been diligent, and I've earned and saved a lot. I went to school and I got good grades. Maybe some were just passing grades. C's make degrees. <laughs> I got a decent job. I worked hard. I impressed my boss. I got promoted, made more money. Me, me, me. If that's our outlook in terms of what we have, it's pretty easy to get tight-fisted on our resources. The alternative way to look at it would be to kind of look back at our lives and see the places where doors have been opened for us and to recognize it's not usually us kicking them down, but someone else opening them for us. When we start with God's grace, we quickly get into a generosity feedback loop. It just kind of keeps building and building and building. So blessings are linked to gratitude. Gratitude is linked to generosity, and the cycle just continues. Now I'm going to steal Bill Ruck's thunder a little bit this morning um, and share with you a little bit of how the church ended up financially last year. And I want to go back a little bit. So at the end of 2019, uh, I knew we, we, were, we had managed our budget responsibly. We had continued to operate in the black all year, uh, but giving was down a little bit. And, um, you know, so I was thinking we would probably come in a little softer than normal, or than we were expecting, rather. Uh, but we were still going to be in a very strong financial position. And, um, and so I, I sent a note out to all of you uh, that said, mentioned if you had end of your gifts you wanted to bring up to the church so that you could do that. And I was going to just kind of prepare you for you know the fact that giving was probably a little softer than normal this year. And Chris Lax called me up. I had sent it to him for a, a quick look over. He said, I think you need to take that line out. 
He said, I think we're going to meet our budget for revenue. And I was just, okay, <laughs> pleasantly surprised. Uh, now, I know you recall what the budget was. Uh, we anticipated $600,000 in giving for 2020. And that was all established back in 19. We ended the year with $626,000 in giving, which is just incredible. During a global pandemic, while there's racial unrest, so much going on in the world, y'all were faithful beyond measure. I mean, it is absolutely incredible how we ended up. I'll let Bill go into some of the specifics on that a little bit later. That was our best year financially. Can you believe that? And what that has enabled us to do for 2021 is to take our missions budget up to $100,000. That is incredible. And it's not about keeping stuff here. It's about what we're doing out there. It's not about building up numbers that look great on the screen. It's about what they are doing out in the world around us. So blessings are linked to gratitude. Gratitude is linked to generosity. And it continues on and on. Uh, Paul says, reap what you sow. And oftentimes in our vernacular, we use that as a, a derogatory term. You know, somebody has a fall from grace and we say, well, you reap what you sow. Um, but Paul is giving us two alternatives there. He says, those who sow sparingly will reap sparingly, but those who uh, sow generously will also reap generously as well. And so that feedback loop continues. So it's fun to share all these numbers with you, and, uh, but you know what? It's really not about the number of dollars. It truly is about the number of souls that are being touched by the work that this church has continued to do throughout this past year. John 21, feed my lambs, take care of my sheep, feed my sheep. It's part of our mission. So on Friday, uh, I took Ethan over to his hitting coach, and I, I want to clarify, batting coach. Um, <laughs> just want to make sure you all understand how we're parenting. So he went over to his batting coach, uh, which is over by the dump. And uh, afterwards, he and I went to Home Depot to uh, pick up a couple things, uh, the one over by Chattanooga Plaza. And as we were going into the store, Ethan said, um, do you remember a couple weeks ago, Mommy and me and, and Grace were, I think they were at Chick-fil-A, uh, and as they were leaving the, the parking lot by Home Depot, they saw a man sitting there uh, who was clearly homeless. He has a dog with him, and you've probably seen him once or twice. Uh, he's pr there pretty regularly, and he's uh, looking for uh, donations for money in order to survive. And so Ethan was uh, telling me about this, and he said, you know, Mommy actually rolled down the window and gave the man some money. And uh, he said, isn't it great that we're able to help people in a time of need? And, you know, out of the mouths of babes, I mean, isn't that right? Isn't that what it looks like to do church in the community? Um, so then he asked me, have you ever heard of Billy Ray Harris? I said, no, who's Billy Ray Harris? And he goes on to tell me this story, and I've looked it up to verify. The Internet says it's true, so it's got to be true, right? No, it really is. Um, in 2013, uh, Billy Ray Harris was down on his luck. He was homeless, uh, completely uh, disconnected from his family. And he was, like that man over at the Home Depot, was uh, looking for money. And so he has this cup, and he meets a lady named Sarah Darling. And she goes over and takes her hand and drops some money in the cup. Unbeknownst to her, her engagement ring also fell into the cup. So she doesn't realize this right away. Uh, eventually, Billy Ray Harris finds the diamond ring in the cup. And he goes off and he gets it appraised. It's a $4,000 ring. I mean, 
He was tempted. But he didn't sell the ring. He kept it, and he eventually gave it back to Sarah Darling. Well, she was so moved by his generosity that she started a GoFundMe account for him and raised $175,000 for this man to buy a house to get a fresh start on life. It's the generosity feedback loop. She started with a smaller gift, then he gave back to her something bigger, then she gave back to him something even greater. And the best part of the story is that when it was featured on the news, Billy Ray was connected back to his sister. Her, his sister heard the story on the news, and he got reconnected with his family. Amazing things happen when we're generous. So my hope for Swift Creek for 2021 is that we have to wear a veil. That we've spent time with the Lord so much that our face is radiant, that it is shining brightly for others to see. Let's be in conversation with the Lord so often and so deeply that the world has to squint their eyes when they see us. And so I have a challenge for you this week. I'm challenging every single family in this church and those online. Drive to Home Depot. Chattanooga Plaza, right there on Hall Street. Drive over there with some cash or maybe some gift cards if you're more comfortable with that and give them to the person in need. Kids, hold your parents accountable. Go to Home Depot this week. And when you go up to that man who's sitting there, say the Lord bless you and keep you. Let's change his world. Let's pray. Gracious God, uh, we give you thanks uh, for the gift of generosity, for uh, receiving it, and for being able to extend it to others. Uh, Lord, I am thankful for all the faithful uh, members here at Swift Creek who have uh, just glad and sincere hearts for the mission and the ministries that you have called us to as a church. Father, I pray that, uh, that the work of this church would continue even more boldly in 2021. Uh, God, God, that we would have hearts and minds and ears that are uh, in tune with the Holy Spirit, that we would follow the Spirit's guidance and direction and movement. Uh, Lord, I pray that uh, you will put us next to the people this week who uh, need help and need hope, and may we provide that for them through meeting physical needs, but also uh, meeting spiritual needs as well. We thank you for the gift of scripture, for the hope that it speaks into our lives, uh, and we just, Lord, ask that you would equip us this week to share it with others. Now we pray the prayer that Jesus taught us to pray, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. And please stand, Harold will read, lead us in the 23rd Psalm. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He makes me to lie down in green pastures. He leads me beside the still waters. He restores my soul. He leads me in the paths of righteousness for his name's sake. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for thou art with me. Thy rod and thy staff, they comfort me. Thou preparest the table before me in the presence of my enemies. Thou anointest my head with oil, my cup runneth over. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life, and I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. Please remain standing as we sing, let us break bread together.
to the Romans. He says, but God demonstrates his own love for us in this. While we were still sinners, Christ died for us. Since we have now been justified by his blood, how much more shall we be saved from God's wrath through him? For if while we were God's enemies, we were reconciled to him through the death of his son, how much more, having been reconciled, shall we be saved through his life? This table is not a Presbyterian table. It is not Swift Creek's table. This is the Lord's table, and all who look to him alone for salvation are welcome here. Please be seated. Let us pray. God, we give you thanks for your scripture, for the ways that it uh, challenges us each week, uh, for the ways that each time we read it, it, it can speak something new into our lives based on what we're going through at the moment. And so we thank you for, uh, for meeting us at this hour, at this day, uh, with whatever needs that we are bringing to the table this morning. You know, your story, God, is your, your scripture, rather, is a story of you seeking after us, chasing after us, even when we've turned away from you. Uh, you continue to turn your face towards us to bless us and encourage us and love us. And so we thank you for scripture. It's witness to um, the interaction between humanity and its maker across uh, all so many millennia. Uh, God, we give you thanks this morning for the prophets, for the words that they use to challenge the people of Israel and the words that uh, challenge us today. Uh, we thank you especially, Lord, for sending your son, Jesus. He did not hold equality with you uh, to be something to be held on to, but rather humbled himself uh, coming to earth, showing us his face, revealing uh, himself to us in ways that are profound and impact our lives. Uh, so God, we give you thanks this morning for his teachings, for his rebukes, uh, for his encouragement, for his instruction. And Lord, I pray that each and every day you will give us hearts and minds that are softened, uh, that we might be changed more into the image of Jesus. Uh, we give you thanks for all this in his holy and precious name. Amen. On the night of his arrest, the Lord Jesus Christ took a loaf of bread and after he had given thanks to God, he broke the bread and he gave it to his disciples and said, take, eat, this is my body broken for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same manner, Jesus took the cup and he said that this is the cup of the new covenant sealed in my blood, shed for the remission of your sins. Whenever you drink from it, do this in remembrance of me. For as often as we eat this bread and drink from this cup, you and I proclaim our Lord's saving death and resurrection until he comes again. These are the gifts of God for you, the people of God. Thanks be to God. Amen. Uh, this morning we'll be taking communion in our seats. Uh, if anyone didn't get elements, please raise your hand and we can make sure you, that you get some. Uh, but let us take the bread as we do most months. Uh, as you are led by the Spirit, do it in prayer. And when the Spirit leads you, take the bread as a sign of your personal relationship that you have with Jesus Christ. Uh, but then hold off on taking the cup until we uh, drink in the cup of salvation together as the body of Christ, as the symbol of the common faith that we share in him. So come you who are hungry, come you who are thirsty, and let us dine in the presence of the Lord. If you've not yet done so, take and eat in remembrance of him. Jesus says, this is the cup of salvation. Let us drink that in together. Let 
us pray. Father God, uh, as I look down at the table, I see the bread that is torn, the imperfections, the places where it's a little misshapen. And it just reminds me about our lives. Some of us are broken, some of us are hurting, some of us are out of sorts. But through this time of being with you, we have been restored. God, I thank you for the nourishment of bread and cup for our bodies, but most especially, I thank you for the relationship with you that restores our lives. God, I pray that we are changed today to go and change the world. I pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. Please stand and sing with us our hymn of dedication, Blessed Assurance. just reminded of last week's uh, scripture, wash me whiter than snow. We have a challenge this week. It is to go to Home Depot at Chattanooga Plaza, 
find that person who is in need and let us with hearts that are glad and sincere give back our earnings to him. You know, as, uh, as I think about God's blessings, it's something not for us to hold on to, to grasp on to, but to give out to others. And now to him who is able to keep you from falling and to make you stand without blemish in the presence of his glory with rejoicing. To the only God, our Savior, through Jesus Christ, our Lord, be all glory, honor, power, and authority before all time and today and forevermore. Amen. to Will's postlude, and then if anyone needs what is called a bio break, you can take that, and then we'll uh, regather for the meeting. By the thinnest of margins, we have a quorum. <laughs> Lock the doors. All right, well, I will call us to order uh, at, it's 11.59, so wait one more minute. All right, it is 12 o'clock. Let us begin this meeting in prayer. Loving and gracious God, we give you thanks for the church, the body of Christ. You encourage us not just to be the church, but to do church. And uh, so, Lord, I thank you for the ways and manifestations we've been able to uh, do that over this past year and just look forward to 2021 with excitement and anticipation and gratitude for what you will continue to do uh, through this body of believers. Uh, God, we thank you for the chance to meet together, uh, to come together on this uh, beautiful Sunday morning uh, and to uh, reflect on uh, this past year and where you're taking us in 21. So 
Uh, Lord, I pray that your spirit's presence would be felt by each person here and that uh, we would be guided by the spirit in our conversations and our decisions. We lift this up in Jesus' name. Amen. All right, uh, we've got a couple things on the agenda, first of which is a revision to my terms of call. So Nicole and I are going to exit for that portion. Um, Jennifer will moderate that portion of the meeting. Uh, once that happens, I will come back in, and Bill Ruck will have the uh, financial update for us, and then Greg Moody has a presentation on the list, lift initiative that we are beginning. So Jennifer, I will turn it over to you. That mic right there in the stand, or yeah, the lectern will work too. Gina Mitz. Okay. I don't see her, but Betty. Good. Because <laughs> otherwise my role just changed. <laughs> awesome. Um, so I call Bill Rutt to the floor to tell us about the terms of call. What we're changing and why. You can use this one. What we're changing is really very simple. It was a clerical error that happened uh, in December, and the, the intent was a 3% raise for David based on salary and housing. Uh, it was only computed on salary. It should have been computed on both. You'll see in the far right-hand column, if you look up at the salary number, that's higher than it was in the middle 2021 column, which was December. The difference is, 800, is uh, $897 net to David. So all this is, this, uh, this corrects a clerical era. Uh, the, the intent was for everybody to give him a 3% on both, but the, I, think, I think there's something, and I'm not the expert here, but the housing has to stay the same for some reason for taxes or something like that. I don't know. It's been a long time since I was a personnel elder. <laughs> so that, that's, any questions on that? So can I get a first, well, no. Can I get a motion to accept the terms of call as presented? A second? Any discussion? Okay, hearing none. All in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed? The motion passes. Test, so <laughs> make sure that gets in the minutes. <laughs> okay, you're safe. I won't say it. You're safe. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Thank you all. Appreciate that. So uh, next on the agenda, Bill's going to review 2020 and uh, look at 21. I'm sitting here listening to the scripture, figuring how I can put it in here into what I'm going to say. And then David stole my thunder, and I'm looking up at the thing, and I see blessings, gratitude, and generosity. And immediately it pops in my mind, some of us will remember the Bee Gees. <laughs> Classic vinyl, okay. All right, well, Not that's, how, that's, <laughs> you too. that's how I'm going to intend to remember blessings, gratitude, and generosity, because i gotta have, I got to have a mnemonic to put things together to remember. Anyway. <laughs> That's exactly what happened last year with us. David mentioned 626,000 plus in, in uh, revenue expenses. Uh, expenses were, uh, you'll see, a little higher than normal, but we did keep them down. Uh, but the bottom line is the net uh, overage, and overage I mean good, because I don't want to say revenue for a nonprofit, but the overage was $86,776. That was, uh, add that to our 106,000 in the reserves that we kept last year. And you can go to the next slide. And so we had, you know, we're gonna get higher than that. I'll explain that in a minute. What did we do in 2020 as highlights? We increased the missions for local missions, uh, the budget for it. 
uh, and did some heavy investment in tech online. Uh, there's a camera coming. I don't think we have it yet, do we? Not quite yet, but it's on yeah, the way. It's, it's coming. J21 Club was a big one up here. That was a big outreach to the uh, community, and it's working. We got the last of our six HVAC units replaced last year, and we took it out of the trustees' budget instead of taking it out of the reserves because they had, they had money left over. They didn't do as much grass mowing and stuff like that. Um, a point to make here on the reserves, for years we've been, we've been worried about replacing air conditioners. I know 20 years ago we started a fund so we'd have enough money to do it. Well, as of this year, all six of the air conditioning units, the original ones, have been replaced. The uh, oldest one is 10 years old, so we've probably got another 10 years before we roll into replacing HVAC units. And we put the new roof on in 2016. That was the other major building issue that we had. Took that out of reserves. So that's done. So we don't have any major projects other than a couple we'll talk about facing us in reserves right now. Um, and we also, last year, pumped up the reserves by another $22,000. So the next slide. Uh, 2021, 90 pledges, $470,000, slightly down from 2020, but that, that's just a, a, a guide mark. Okay, next. Historical performance. Uh, don't let the slide mislead you because the bottom line is, uh, I think, $400,000. It's not twice as much in, a, in revenue over expenses this year. But this, this will show you that you can pretty much see in yellow our expenses have been somewhat level over the last five or six years. It's the green, the green and donations that David mentioned, the generosity went through the roof the last couple of years. Okay, next one. And historical performance as far as numbers go, you can see an upward trend in, uh, in revenue, uh, expenses once again about level, and you see how we got 56,000 over in uh, uh, 2019 and, and blew the lid through that with $87,000 this year. Amazing. So we basically, when we took some, we took some, uh, re readjusted some funds, the session did in the, uh, in the uh, budget where we had, you know, we had $48,000 for the road we never built. We combined that with our gains this year, with what we had last year. We've got over a quarter million dollars in the reserves right now. And I remember 15, 20 years ago when we were lucky to have 35,000. So this is just amazing. Uh, the plan for 2021 that the session approved was a budget of 630,000, but back out of that 29,500 to build up the reserves again. So our operating budget is just over $600,000. And that's about right where we've been for a couple years now. All right, next, or is that it? Oh, so here's the approved budget that the session did. Uh, personnel has always been between 53 and 55 percent. David mentioned we're in six figures in donations to missions now, $100,000. Uh, the next biggest one, of course, is uh, trustees, but that includes the light bill, the uh, water, utilities, other things we have, trash pickup, cutting the lawn. That's about $50,000 in, in pretty much level costs each year. And then you can see the rest of the, uh, the number on the right is the percentage of the, the budget area of the whole budget. So after, after you leave the uh, trustees down to finance and admin, it just drops on down after that. So I'll show the next slide, that'll finish up the, uh, the budget, uh, budget uh, areas that we do watch each month. And then 29,500 to uh, build up the reserves. That's above the, above the operating budget. Last year, the operating budget was 600,000. Really, all we've done is increase it by 500 this year. Any questions on the budget? Just remember the Bee Gees every time you hear it. <laughs> Good morning, everybody. Um, so I'm glad to be here to kind of share with you a little bit about what Program Lift is all about. Um, some of you that have been here for a while uh, probably recall 
um, I forget how many years ago it was now. We did uh, a little bit of uh, cosmetic work around here. We, we did the linoleum out there in the commons area. We worked on um, kind of sprucing up and modernizing the large Sunday school room. And at that time, um, y'all may remember the this, uh, slogan that we came up with, uh, kind of branding that whole effort, and it was putting on the shine. And so it's... Uh, it's uh, about that time again for us to be thinking about what is it that God wants us to do to kind of spruce this place up and uh, have it ready for the next couple of years. And so uh, the team kind of came together and, and did a bit of brainstorming, and um, we came up with uh, some ideas and even some bad ideas that we were joking about, like facelifts. And then we started, after laughing, thinking, well, what if we shorten it down to the lift, right? Because isn't that what God wants us to do? I mean, think about coming out of a pandemic, right? We're, we need to be lifting up our, our gaze on him and, 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 and thanking him for all of his faithfulness through this entire time period. God continues to leverage this church, and it's, uh, it's amazing when you look at the uh, numbers from the budget standpoint, what we're able to do from a missions standpoint. And so we just want to make sure that the church itself reflects the vibrancy of this uh, body and that we take some of the generosity and really kind of put it back into being able to serve uh, the community. So the group really was thinking about um, coming out of this pandemic, we not only want to be able to have our church members all back together with us, but we also want to make sure that this place is inviting for us to bring our friends, our neighbors, and visitors at large. And so what we tried to do was look at the... Um, um, is, is, well, let me start with the, the goals here. So, again, we want to celebrate and kind of build the member enthusiasm. Um, and then the second piece of it really is to attract visitors and improve that visitor experience. So, you can see the team uh, members up there. It's cross-functional. There's a lot of folks that go to the 9 o'clock service and some that go to the 11 o'clock service. So, we feel like we got a pretty good uh, mix of team members. If you don't mind, advance the slide for me. <clears throat> so really there was three areas that we focused on, and again, we tried to put our mind in uh, the first-time visitor um, experience. And so what we're really kind of focusing on is three different areas. One is going to be the exterior, and then we're going to look at what might we be able to do here in the sanctuary, and then as well in the commons. And so these are just um, some examples of areas of uh, items that we are inspecting, but we are not professionals. We know that. And so what we've done is um, uh, engaged with a design firm, and uh, they are a local outfit that specifically does architectural work for churches. And so if you can think of any of the newer churches um, that have either um, built new buildings or done renovations here in the Richmond or even Central Virginia area, most likely that was the firm that, that they used. They are um, pretty much the only show in town. Um, and so we've engaged with them, and we're going to um, have them put, pull together some concepts for us, and then we'll be able to come back and share those concepts with the elders and with the congregation so that y'all can kind of see what we've been up to. Um, what's in yellow there is something that I would refer to as deferred maintenance. And so, again, you know, Bill talked about all the work that's been done from a HVHC standpoint and a roof standpoint. Uh, we know, too, that if you come here at night, it is a little difficult to see the church. And so, um, notwithstanding the church parking lot, and especially when you have snows like this, and it just gets beat up pretty bad. And so, those are two bodies of work that we knew needed to be done. And thanks to the um, graciousness of the, the congregation, we were, we're going to be able to do that uh, this year. So, we're pretty excited about that. So, um, that is uh, program lift, and so we will be back, like I said, uh, in the future to share with you the progress and the concepts that we've done here. Yeah, so we've been looking at um, uh, new signage both a large sign that is lit as well as directional signage and then lights that are, Bill, you know this better than I do, we, we're definitely putting more lights in the parking lot itself. Is there going to be one at the entrance?
Any other questions? That would be great. Yeah, we've got, um, so the, the way that we're kind of sequencing the work is we want to do the um, architectural design concepts first, and then when we can get uh, zeroed in on which one we want to approach, we've got uh, another company um, that does the sign, like turnkey, and we will provide that concept to them, and they will match the sign to our exterior concepts. Does that help? Yeah, we haven't we haven't gotten down to that level of detail yet, but that is definitely an, uh, an option that is um, we've been looking at. We just right now we've really kind of focused in on the trying to find the right design for them. Yes, sir. That is that is something that we t we talked about a lot, and so um, that is definitely in scope. Um, there is, you know, you can imagine um, with a building this, this age, um, there's quite a bit of stuff that has modernized from a technology standpoint. You may or may not have realized how much technology enhancements that we've done this year. And so this would be looking at the total technology platform, um, inclusive of lighting, because what we'd usually bring out is stuff that you plug in. Um, but there's ways to, if we redo the stage as an example, we would be looking to build something in so that it's, you know, a, a total package. Oh, yeah, 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 that's good, like, for this stuff, right? Yeah. So, yeah, we'll be looking at all of that stuff, inclusive of, like, our chandeliers that are from 1970. <laughs> we might look at bringing those up a couple decades. Um, we got lots of fun ideas, but you know, you think about the ministries that are growing here, just with um, this past year, how much we've grown around the online experience.